Howdy folks, today we're going to break down a fight. But first, last week on Eve Help Desk, someone came in asking about overheating. What we're going to do today is look at that question and then break down a fight and use that fight to talk about some PvP concepts and address overheating in a real world scenario. So here's the question. Tell me about overheating. I know what the benefits are and why you want to do it, but don't fully understand how the heat damage is applied. What is the difference between overload rack and turn on overload? Right clicking a module. Heat appears to still apply to the whole rack no matter what option you choose. Yeah, okay. Let's talk about heat. Um, so we're just talking about heat spreading, but I'm actually going to sort of just talk about heat in general and we will include a discussion about how heat spreads. Um, so there is functionally no difference between heating the rack like this, or this, or this, and just heating individual modules. And the way I'm doing this quickly, by the way, is shift clicking. Uh, you'll see if I heat both the high slot modules, this turns on automatically because I have heated the entire rack. So these buttons um, pretty much never get used. Uh, you just heat the modules you want to use or that you want to heat in particular. Um, and don't worry so much about whether you're heating the whole rack or not. Um, modules will heat damage or not take heat damage uh, regardless of whether you use these buttons to heat them or heat them individually. Now to your the second part of your question, it seems like modules in the rack get damaged regardless of which option you choose. That is because heat spreads, and actually heat spreads based on where your modules are. So if I heat this medium ancillary armor repair right here, right, it's going to spread damage to the modules next to it, and even potentially the modules further away from it as well. Uh, you can see my mids here actually are going to have a problem. If I heat all of these, their damage will spread uh, to one another and actually f damage them further than if you had simply heated one of them. So if I heat all of these, right, you can see they're all next to each other. So the heat damage spread across them is going to be, um, is going to accumulate very quickly. Same with the high slots, right? Everything's packed in together here. Now actually, the correct way to set up these high Nothing slots, let me dock up and show you how this looks. The correct way to set up these high slots is with the newt acting as a heat sink between all the guns. So I'll show you what that looks like here. The way that you actually want to set this up is like this. I didn't have to take off both of those, but you get the idea. Like that. So that when I heat my guns, these two are trading heat to one another, and these two are trading heat to one another, and the newt is taking a lot of heat damage. Um, but the newt is acting as a buffer zone between these two, so it kind of acts as a heat sink between these two very hot areas if I'm heating the guns. If I'm heating both, then you know, everything's rough uh, and it is what it is, but generally for your spare high slots uh, in ships where you have utility high slots, you want to, actu it actually matters what order these go in and you want to put the spare module, in this case a small newt, uh, in between your guns. But yeah, that's how heat spreads. It will spread between your modules. I don't think it spreads between racks, so I don't think heating this could actually damage the high slots, and vice versa. I don't think that this could damage here. Um, it's just within the rack. I'm pretty sure if someone wants to correct me on that, there would be too. But that is how heat spreads. Um, and yeah, it looks like that answered your question. Uh, one other thing I will add is for those that don't heat their modules or are nervous about heating their modules, um, you should heat early uh, and often you should heat early in a fight rather than heating near the end of the fight a lot of times people will use heat as a oh shit i need to deal a lot of damage right now or i need to go fast now um, and usually it's too late at that point so heat first 
then cool off if it looks like the fight is going to go your way. Heat first, then cool off if it looks like you're going to win. Is it true that you don't have that turned on? It will still take the heat anyway. Uh, yes, so you mean this, right? If this was offline? Uh, yeah, so if you... Good point. Uh, if there were not enough fitting room to bring something online here, uh, and usually you might just leave this slot empty, uh, it actually does make sense to put like a salvager one here, uh, even if it's offline, because it will take damage um, and still act as a heat sink. So yes, you can put offline modules, uh, even ones that you don't intend to use, as heat sinks in your fits if you want to. All right, so we're going to run this back at 75% speed. And we'll just start going here. Um, I am in an Omen Navy issue, which is a really cool, fast ship, does a lot of damage, and is really great at dealing with tackle. I have a friend with me who is flying an Osprey Navy issue, which is very similar. Uh, much longer range with its light missiles, has a trade-off with um, being able to just deal damage for a short amount of time and then having to go on reload. But we're both in fast cruisers that can deal with tackle well. And the first thing we're going to see here when we come in is that there are already a bunch of folks in local. And I'm pumping my scan here and I see two Orthruses. And here they start to land. We're going to get one, and we're going to get two. And we're going to pay attention to what those Orthruses do, right? Watching them, watching their vector lines, watching their speeds as they land. I'm holding my cloak this whole time. I've got a full minute. We can see the first one starts to burn away. The second one starts to burn away. A third lands, another ship, a Gnosis this time. We'll watch what the Gnosis does. A harpy lands, so that's some tackle, right? We can deal with the orthroses are trouble for our cruisers. The gnosis starts to slowly burn away. So they're making it really difficult for themselves to get back to this gate quickly. And what's going to happen is when my friend and I go to crash this gate, right? A saber just came through. He's the closest one to the gate, and that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Saber bubbles us, the Orthruses are turning around, and Osprey is landing on the gate at zero. My friend and I are crashing through the gate, and we're going to jump back to the other side. We're going to wait a second, we're still going to hold our cloaks for just a moment. Right, just holding, just waiting, nothing's happening yet. Waiting to see gate flashes here, and for local to increase. They're thinking about it. And here they come. So there's plus two, right? We can see the gate flashes come in right here. And so we start moving. And we're going to turn on our micro warp drives and basically align towards the sun. There's two sabers. This is a dangerous spot here. Sabers are fairly tanky. And so we primary one, right? We start shooting Rose. But you'll see that Rose is not coming towards us. Rose went back to the gate. Clara is chasing us now. And Clara's really close to me and gets a scram. So this is a huge problem. Let's pause here. This is a big problem. The saber that's right on top of me is causing me to basically not be able to use my micro warp drive. We haven't started overheating anything yet, by the way. Keep, keep that in mind down here. There's nothing heating yet. There we go. Nothing heating yet down here. I'm scrammed though, so I can't turn on my micro drive. You'll notice the first thing I do is preheat my micro drive. So I'm in the process of I'm going to shift click this button and you're going to see it preheat. This part right up here will glow bright green. Then what's going to happen is I'm going to switch to, I think I'm already using close range ammo. I can't tell based on what we're seeing right now, but I'm going to switch to Close range ammo, if I'm not already using it, that'll be conflag and overheat. And basically, uh, both my friend and I are going to overheat on Clara, right? Clara is now the biggest threat, right? The closest thing to us. And also, keep in mind, as all this is happening, 
were racing against the clock because a legion is now in an orthrus is now in this is four you can see here and there's one two three four five six seven eight minus two that were already in here six there's two more ships that haven't decloaked yet so i'm about to be taking a lot of incoming damage let's trash that and continue so there you go overheating right and i'm going to overheat my guns in just a moment as well basically i'm spamming my micro -org drive as soon as clara goes down right clara's very close to dead finally dies as soon as that happens my micro -org drive is going now one mistake i'm making here is not instantly overheating my ancillary armor repair um, i start the overheat cycle for cycle two and basically at this point i'm not worried about shooting anything anymore you can see my guns are not cycling I am just worried about aligning and getting away. This Orthrus has me pointed, right? But I can still move quickly. I'm still overheating this and this. And I'm just trying to get out of range of this Orthrus point. I get out of range. I leave my drones behind. I don't care about the drones. And we're out. So we're going to pause here. From a very basic perspective, that is a fight win there. Uh, against the enemy fleet. Um, we killed one saber and we both escaped. Now let's look at the overheat. Uh, you guys will notice the things that we talked about overheating were this, this, and this, right? Only these three modules were overheated during that engagement. But look, we've got overheat damage here, and we've got overheat damage here. This goes back to the question and answer that we saw earlier. Those are taking damage because they're next to modules that I was overheating during the fight. And you'll actually see, if we run this a little further, this is going to run a couple more cycles, and some of these low slot modules are going to take damage as well. And so it's taking more damage as I'm running overheated cycles on this uh, ancillary armor repair. And there we go. Look, you can barely see it kind of behind that overlay there, but this gyro or this uh this tracking enhancer took some heat damage there and there you go this heat sink also took some heat damage and you can see that is because this ancillary armor repair is spreading its damage like the nano took some heat damage as well so there you go hopefully that helps illustrate heat damage and how it spreads and also gives you guys an idea of uh what a fight looks like broken down at 75% speed. Thanks for watching. See you next time.